Okay, number 16 on the practice exam for Math 1230 asks for the average value of a function on the specified interval from 0 to 4. To compute the average value of a function, there's a formula. So average value equals 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of the function f of x integrated with respect to x. So this first x value in, this in, in the interval over which we're calculating the average, that's a. So we have a is equal to 0. And the second x value, that's b, so we have b is equal to 4. So I'm going to rewrite this as integral, or 1 over 4 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to 4 of the function, 6 over the root of 3x plus 4 integrated with respect to x. So that will be 1 over 4 times that the antiderivative of that function, whatever it is, we'll, get the, we'll compute that separately, evaluated from 0 to 4. Okay. Now we do the antiderivative. So I'm going to do that as a side calculation. Now the integral of 6 over the square root of 3x plus 4 integrated with respect to x. To integrate this function, we need to use substitution. I'm going to let w equal the, in the thing that's inside the function, 3x plus 4, the thing that's inside the square root. You cannot treat the antiderivative of 1 over a function as the ln of that function. That's not going to work in general. If it doesn't look like 1 over x, or 1 over x plus 2, or 1 over x plus 7, you have to do a substitution if it looks like this. If it also involves a log function, you may have to do integration by parts, but we'll not get into that right now. Alright, dw by dx, we have to replace dx, so we have to take the derivative. 3x, the derivative of that's 3 plus the derivative of 4, derivative of 4 is 0, so plus 0, I can bother writing the plus 0, then cross multiply by dx, so dw is equal to 3dx, and then we want to get dx all by itself, so dx is dw over 3. Now if you're doing this the other way, if you're doing substitution using the method from Dr. Meredith's class, then you would replace the 6 with the 3 times 2, and then you'd group the 3 with the dx, so and then replace 3 times dx with dw. So you'd have 2dw over the root of w, which we'll get the same thing using this, this approach. They're completely equivalent. Just habits die hard for me. So 6 over square root of w, and then we replace the dx with dw over 3. Alright, now we can partially cancel. 6 over 3 is 2. I'm going to put the 2 in front of the integral. And square root of w means w to the power of negative 1 half. So I'm going to, or 1 over the square root of w, I mean. 1 over the square root of w is w to the power of negative 1 half. dw. So you have to do that whenever the power downstairs is not negative 1. When the power downstairs is simply negative 1, then the antiderivative will give you the log function. When well, the power downstairs is 1, I mean. I'll write that down. So this is really, really, really important because of the mistakes that I saw that were made on the quiz, mistakes that, are, that were made in previous years on the exam for Math 1225. Integral of 1 over f of x dx is not the ln of the absolute value of f of x plus c. You can't do that. However, there is one case where you can. There's only one type of f of x that you can use this type of a shortcut for. Integral of 1 over x plus a. That's the ln of the absolute value of x plus a plus c. And then here's a double, however. What happens if it's bx plus a? 
or if there's another constant there. I don't think this cloud's big enough. Need more cloud. Okay, here's the other, however. Integral of 1 over bx plus a. If you do substitution, let w equal bx plus a, go through all the work that we just did, we'll find that we get 1 over b times ln absolute value of bx plus a and plus c. And then a really big, however, integral of 1 over, I'll do x plus a to the n, dx, has to be written as integral of 1 over, or not 1 over, get rid of the 1 over, x plus a to the negative n, dx, and then do a substitution, let w equal x plus a. And you'll get integral of w to the power of negative n dw. And the anti-power rule says that the derivative of w to the power, the antiderivative of w to the power of negative n is w to the power of negative n plus 1. We increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power. And then plus c. Now you can replace the w with what it is, x plus a to negative n plus 1 plus c. And that's only true for n not equal to 1. If n is equal to 1, oh, I'm going to escape the cloud. If n is equal to 1, then integral of 1 over x plus a dx, that's just ln absolute value. We wrote that, we'll write it again. So the only one that's special, the only one that's a log function is, is if n equals 1. So here, our power is not 1. Our power is negative 1 half, so we're not going to get a log function. Or not power. The power is not negative 1, the power is negative 1 half. So the anti-power rule says that we're going to increase the power by 1, so a negative 1 half plus 1, and then we're going to divide, not divide, we'll multiply by 1 over the new power. 1 over negative 1 half plus 1. Okay, we're going to simplify that. Negative 1 half plus 1 is 1 half. We have w to the 1 half. And then 1 over a half is 2. So you reciprocate. 1 divided by a half. Divide by a fraction. Multiply by the reciprocal. So we get 2. So we're going to get 2. W to the 1 half. Times 2. So 4 times the square root of w. Which is 4 times the square root of 3x. Plus 4. But we let w equal to. So now we can go back to our integral, put that in 4 times square root dx plus 4. And something nice happens, the 4 cancels top and bottom. Now we're left with square root of plus sign, 3x plus 4, evaluated from 0 to 4. Really messy. There, okay. Now let's plug in the bounds. Plug in the top bound. Square root of 3 times 4, 12 plus 4, minus square root of 0 plus 4. So we'll get root 16 minus root 4. Root 16 is 4, root 4 is 2. So 4 minus 2, we get 2 as our answer. So choice B. Okay, 17, an area problem. We're asked to construct the expression that represents the area that's bounded by the two functions y equals 5 over x, y equals 6 minus x, and x is equal to 8, just a vertical line. 
and we're given some options and we should immediately throw away at least two of the options. We should th throw away option A and throw away option D because those are single intervals and this function, at least from the picture that's showing us, is two regions, two areas, area 1 plus area 2. So we're going to have to write this area as an integral for the first region and another, another integral for the second region. We have to find out what the bounds of these integrals are. The top bound of the second integral is, is going to be 8. That's that vertical line. x is equal to 8. I put an 8 there. But we need the first bound. So the first bound of the first integral, that point there, and we need the other point where they cross. And there's no labels on the axes. We can't read off what the intersection points are from the graph itself. We have to solve for the intersection points. So solve for x. So to do that, I set y equal to y. I set one function equal to the other function. So 5 over x is equal to 6 minus x. I'm going to multiply both sides by x. So 5 is equal to 6x minus x squared. And then bring all, all the pieces over to the left. So add x squared to both sides. Subtract 6x from both sides and leave the 5 where it is on the left. Yeah, that's a nice quadratic. Try to factor it, make two brackets. In the leading position of both brackets, put an x. And we want to find a combination of terms that when we multiply them together, we get 5. When we add them together, we get negative 6. And the combination we'll do that is negative 1 and negative 5. Negative 1 plus negative 5 is negative 6. Negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. This means we get two solutions. x is equal to 1. And another solution, x is equal to 5. So we've got a 1 there. And 5 there. That allows us to fill in the bounds of our integral. We're going from 1 to 5, plus an integral from 5 to 8. So we're looking for a combination that does that. 1 to 5, 5 to 8. So B and C both have that. E does not, so I'm going to cross that out. Next, we have to figure out what, the, what expression goes inside the area integral. So this is always the top minus the bottom. plus the top minus the bottom from 5 to 8. And it might be a different top or from bottom in each region. And in this case it indeed is. Okay. So from 1 to 5, the function that's on top is the blue one one of the highest y values. So that's 6 minus x. And then minus the bottom function, 5 over x. Plus integral from 5 to 8. And the top function in the second region is the red one. Well, I shouldn't say colors because in your exam, if you have a question like this, it will be black and white. So looking at the curve, this top function corresponds to 5 over x. minus 6 minus x. Probably the x is there. Okay, and the one that matches that is 6 minus x minus 9 over x, and so that would be choice B. Okay, number 18. We're asked to calculate the area bounded by these two curves, ln of x over x and 3 ln of x over x from x is equal to 1 to x is equal to e. So from the diagram, we see that the lower bound is an x value of 1, and an upper bound of x is equal to e. So that's also where you can take that directly from the question of going from 1 to e. So in this case, we don't have to find the bounds that are given to us. Here we go from 1 to e. And you may have to read it off the diagram for some questions.
and we're going to have the top function minus the bottom function. Now, these are not labeled. You can't tell if the top one is ln of x over x or 3 times ln of x over x, but take a wild guess. Something multiplied by 1 versus something multiplied by 3, which one's higher? And both things are positive. And the one multiplied by 3 is going to be higher. So that'll be my top function. Here I go from 1 to e. Uh, 3 times ln of x over x minus 1 times ln of x over x dx. So you have 3 pizzas minus 1 pizza, that's 2 pizzas. I'm going to put the 2 in front. 2 times the integral from 1 to e of ln of x over x. Okay. Now you have to figure out how to do this integral. You may, you may be uh, torn between two different approaches to get that antiderivative. Whatever it is, when we get it, we're going to multiply it by the 2 that's in front of the integral that we took out, we contracted out, and we're going to then evaluate from 1 to e. So you're most likely going to struggle between choosing from substitution versus integration by parts every time you see a log function. I'll give you a kind of a hint. From this is not always true. You can make up counterexamples to this rule, but if it's ln of x with x stuff downstairs, you're going to want to use substitution. If it's ln of x top or if it's ln of x upstairs and x also upstairs, you're going to want to use integration by parts. So if x was on top with multiplied instead of, instead of dividing, you'd use IDP, integration by parts, the UDV thing. But in this case, we're going to use substitution. Now in truth, both methods will work for this. You could use IDP for this or substitution for this. But I'll use substitution because it's way, way faster. So I'm going to let w equal a lot of x. Then dw by dx is 1 over x. I'm going to carefully isolate for dx. So cross multiply by x and cross multiply by dx. So I'll have x dw equals dx times 1. Okay. So that's our replacement for dx. We leave the x that's downstairs alone. We replace the ln of x with the w. We have w over x and dx is x times dw. And it's a good substitution because the old variable completely disappears and we have an integral just in terms of the new variable w dw. Antiderivative of w is 1 half w squared plus c, but because there's bounds of integration we don't need the plus c. I think I mentioned that in the last time we did the substitution. Okay. So we can plug that into our antiderivative. Oh, no, no, I lied. We can't do that yet. Not yet. We have to put it back in terms of x. So 1 half and w is so 1 of x, so 1 half 1 of x squared. 1 half 1 of x squared. So the technique I'm using is one that doesn't require us to change the bounds of integration. As long as you take your antiderivative and put it back in terms of x, you can use the original bounds. Simplify a little bit the 2 and the 1 half, multiply together to cancel, give you 1. So we have ln of x to the power of 2 evaluated from 1 to e. Plug in the top bound, ln of e, all squared. Plug in the bottom bound, ln of 1, all squared. Ln of e is 1, and ln of 1 is 0. So we have 1 squared minus 0, 1 minus 0, which is 1. That's our answer. So choice C. Right. Number 19. Number 19, or again, we're given a picture, and the picture is partially labeled. They tell us what the top function is and what the bottom function is. The top function is 6 minus x squared. That's the top one. The bottom one is x squared plus 4x. But they don't tell us the points of intersection. They don't tell us the a and the b and in our bounds.
and we have to find them. First, we'll write down the area integral. The area is an integral from a to b of the top function minus the bottom function. So, let's get the bounds. We set y equal to y. So that means 6 minus x squared is equal to x squared plus 4x. I can move everything to the right this time, no particular reason. So add x squared to both sides, subtract 6 for both sides. On the left we have 0. On the right we have 2x squared, x squared plus x squared. And then we have plus 4x and then minus 6. And the common factor of 2 out. And then we're left with x squared plus 2x minus 3. And now we'll finish factoring that quadratic x and x. We want to multiply the two numbers together to give us negative 3, add them together to give us positive 2. So if I do plus 3 and minus 1, those plus 3 times negative 1 multiply to give negative 3, and plus 3 plus negative 1 give us positive 2. So that works in the middle term. That means we have two x values. x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to positive 1. So those are our bounds of integration, We're going from negative 3 to 1. And there's no other way to do that. You can't always tell from the picture because the picture does not always have the axes labeled. So you will have to, for area problems, you will have to often set the functions equal. And there will be cases where you read it off the diagram. There's both. You can't just rely on one method, you know, both methods. All right, now top function minus bottom function. Six minus x squared minus, and here's the most common mistake that's made on this type of problem. When you subtract from the bottom term, both pieces have to be hit by that minus sign, which is weird. It, I, I don't mean that's not weird. What, what's weird is that when I, when I mark these things, I typically find that the bounds are calculated properly, the integral set up properly, it's integrated properly, but that negative sign is not carried through in the bracket. That's the most common error. Okay, so we have 6, nothing cancels, and a negative x squared minus another, another negative x squared, that's minus 2x squared, and then minus 4x, the negative sign hitting that piece too. Okay, now we integrate this. Antiderivative of 6 is 6 times x. Antiderivative of x squared is 1 over 3 x to the 3. An antiderivative of negative 4x is negative 4 times 1 half x squared. And we're evaluating this from negative 3 to 1. Now this one wasn't designed to be very friendly because there's going to be some fractions in it. But that's okay. 6 minus 2 over 3x to the 3, and then 4 times a half, 2, so minus 2x to the 2, evaluated from negative 3 to 1. And now we plug in the top bound. 6 times 1, 6. 2 thirds times 1 to the 3. 1 to the 3 is 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. That is minus 2 thirds times 1. Minus 2 times 1 squared, which is just 2 times 1. And then the lower bound, plug negative 3 in, 6 times negative 3, negative 18. Plug negative 3 into the second piece, negative 3 cubed is negative 27. So we have negative, I'll write, I'll write a step here because it's more complicated, negative 2 thirds multiplied by negative 27, and then minus 2 times negative 3 squared, which is positive 9. Now my least favorite part, dealing with this stuff. 6 minus 2, 4, minus 2 thirds, minus, and clean up this bracket, negative 18, and we have negative 27 over 3, that's negative 9, negative 9 times negative 2, plus 18, and then minus 18. Well, there's some good stuff that's happening in that bracket, the negative, one of the negative 18s and the positive 18 are going to cancel out. I'm going to leave these brackets here for now. 
So those two destroy each other. All right, now it's getting down to the, the end here. Negative times negative positive, 18. And I'm going to combine the, con the uh, whole numbers. So 22 minus 2 over 3. We need to make a common denominator. Multiply top and bottom of 22 by 3, so 66. Minus 2 all over 3. 64 all over 3. So option B. The only thing that's unusual about this question as far as exams go would be all the fraction stuff. It's there. Well, that last, I guess that last, that last step, making the common denominator. I wouldn't want to uh, contaminate a big question like this with too much fraction. Work. It's already a lot, of, a lot of work with it, even without it. Okay, so those are the three area problems, and we'll just to go over them again, the, the types. There, there could be types where you just set up the area integral, which may or may not require you to get the bounds of integration by setting the functions equal to each other, solving for x, or reading it off the diagram. There's a type where the picture is kind of given, but the functions aren't labeled. You have to identify which one's the top, which one's the bottom, you're given the bounds. So it could be another one. And in this case, this one's completed to the end, so integrated and evaluated. And the last one, there's a lot of work involved in finding the bounds. And then you set the integral and you complete it. And in every case, a picture, picture is given. Not necessarily a complete picture, not necessarily completely labeled. Okay, number 20. We're looking for the integral of x squared times e to the x. And this is a, a common type. And we've done it, in, I think, in both, in all, in all four classes. We've, we've gone over this. It's in the homework. It's in the practice sheets. You should be expecting x to the n times e to the x for some, for some value of n. You should be expecting that. It's like a standard integral to ask you. Okay. The way to do this is integration by parts, IBP. We use the late method, L-A-T-E, to identify what function we use, or what piece of this function we use for the U variable, and which function we use for the DV. Because we're going to rewrite this integral okay, as U times V minus the integral of V DU. Okay, L stands for logs, A stands for algebraic, which is x to the n, T stands for trig, E stands for exponential. We have an exponential in there, e to the x, but the letters are in order of importance for what to, what to let u equal to. So the A comes before the E, we're going to let u equal x squared, the algebraic term. And that means dv is everything else. So I have integral... So the x squared is taken care of. We still have an e to the x and a dx left over. Now we integrate both sides. We get v. v is integral of e to the x dx. Integral of e to the x just e to the x plus c. But at this stage, we don't write the plus c. So that's one ingredient that we need. We need the v inside this expression. We also need the du. So I'm going to calculate du by dx. du by dx is 2x cross multiplying, d is equal to 2x dx. Okay, so we can substitute those pieces in. So u times vx squared times e to the x, and then minus integral of v du, integral of du is 2x dx, And then d is e to the x. Okay, now let's clean this up a little bit. x squared e to the x minus, put the 2 outside, integral of x e to the x dx. And guess what? We have to do it again. We have to do IDP one more time. So that'll be x squared e to the x minus 2 times something. Makes, I'll make a bracket to put the result in. And now do another substitution. Well, let's just put in what we're going to get, uv minus integral of v du. And calculate what that is. So that's another calculation off to the side. Integral x e to the x dx. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to let u equal 
x from the late method, uh, the algebraic term comes first. That means du by dx is 1, so du is equal to dx. Now we have to find the v term. So we let u equal x, that means everything else has to be dv. dv is e to the x dx. Integrate both sides to get v. Integral of e to the x, v to the x. So we did this already, but do it again. So uv minus integral v du. So x e to the x minus integral v is e to the x and du is dx. So we have x e to the x minus integral v to the x, which is just e to the x. And now we'll put a, well, we'll do it at the end, we'll put a big plus c at the end. So x squared e to the x minus 2 times the stuff that we just found. x e to the x minus e to the x. And it doesn't really matter if you put the plus c inside the bracket in this case. It's multiplied by a constant, multiplied by negative 2, and I'll just give you a different plus c. So I'll, I'll just put it outside, but don't let that bother you. You could have put it inside and just had minus 2 multiplied by c, and then called it c squiggle instead of c x squared e to the x, multiply the negative 2 to the bracket, negative 2 x e to the x, and again the negative 2 has multiplied by the next piece as well, so negative times negative positive 2 e to the x plus c. x squared minus 2 x e to the x plus 2 e to the x plus c, option A. Okay, number 21. We're integrating, I read, I'll write it down again, x times one of x dx. And when we take the antiderivative of that, whatever it is, whatever the antiderivative is, we're going to evaluate it on the bounds. So I'll put a box for the answer, and we're going from 1 to e. Maybe we'll need more room in the box, hold up. I don't know how big this function is, so lots of space for it. All right, now we'll do that off to the side. Antiderivative of x times one of x dx. If you try a substitution, if you try that, you'll have w equals 1 of x, then dw by dx is 1 over x, rearrange. You won't get cancellations. You'll get integrals x squared times w dw, and then you have to play some games. You just, you'd end up rewriting it as uh, a type of exponential integral that you'd also have to use the other method for to solve. So you just kind of go in circles a bit. What you'd end up doing is you'd need integration by parts for that. And you're going to need integration by parts if you read it in this format as well. So no matter what, what you do, no matter how you play games with this, trying to do different substitutions, you're going to end up with something that requires an integration by parts. So let's just do that right away. IBP. And here we go, L, A, T, E, late. This time the L comes first. We have a log function in there. So U is equal to 1 of X. That means DU by DX is 1 over X. We we're going to isolate for DU because we're going to we're going to write this integral as UV minus integral of DU. Okay, so we need DU. DU is DX over X. Now we have to get v, so that means identifying what dv is. We already said that lot of x is u. That means what's ever left over, x and dx multiplied together, has to be dv. Now we integrate. And the derivative of x is 1 half x squared. Now we have all the ingredients we need. So u is lot of x. v is 1 half x squared minus integral v, one-half x squared, times du, which is dx over x. I'm going to clean this up with the one-half in front. One-half x squared, one of x, minus, put the one-half in front. Integral x squared over x is just x dx. 
Now we can integrate that. Antiderivative of x is 1 half x squared. I'll put a plus c. And then one more step, let's clean this up. 1 half x squared, lot of x. 1 half times 1 half, 1 quarter. Minus 1 over 4, x squared, plus c. Now we don't need the plus c because there's bounds of integration. So I'm going to plug this in without the plus c. 1 half x squared, lot of x, minus 1 over 4, x squared. Okay, now we plug in the top bound, plug in the bottom bound, subtract. So we plug the top bound in. We have 1 half e squared times the log of e minus 1 over 4 e squared minus the bottom bound. 1 half times 1 times log of 1 minus 1 over 4 times 1. Since 1 to the power of 2 is just 1 times 1, which is 1. Okay, I'm going to continue this down below. I'm running out of space. Okay, so we have 1 half e squared times the log of e. Log of e is 1. Minus 1 over 4 e squared. That's the first bracket. Minus second bracket, we have 1 half times 1 times 0. It's a lot of 1 of 0, minus 1 over 4. And then, we can clean up the first term, first bracket. 1 over one half of e squared minus 1 quarter of e squared, minus 1, minus, minus, so plus 1 quarter. And one, that negative sign again, we have to multiply through the bracket and make sure it hits both pieces. We have minus 0 plus 1 quarter, so just plus a quarter. Now, we make common denominators and multiply top and bottom of the first term by 2. So 2 over 4 e squared minus 1 over 4 e squared plus 1 over 4. So 2 over 4 of e squared minus 1 over 4 e squared. So 2 minus 1, we get 1 over 4 e squared plus 1 over 4. And then we can write that as e squared plus 1 all over 4. Plus B. Okay, 22. Find the partial fraction decomposition of f of x equals that thing. And what that means is we want to find the a and b values. Before we do that, we have to factor the bottom. It's quadratic, and we try to factor it into two linear terms. If it does factor into two linear terms, we can use the method of partial fractions to rewrite it. Decompose it. So I'm going to put an x and an x in the leading position. So we want to find two numbers and multiply them together, even negative 20. When we add them together, give you positive 1. And what does that is plus 5 and minus 4. And the partial fraction decomposition would then be a over x plus 5 plus b over x minus 4. It doesn't matter which one you put first. You could put a over x minus 4 plus b over x plus 5, or flip it around any way you want. It doesn't matter what you call them. Okay, so we have an x plus 5 and an x minus 4 downstairs. I can get rid of anything that doesn't match that. So b doesn't match that, it has an x minus 5. e has an x minus 5. Okay, and the rest are x plus 5 and x minus 4s. So that, those, that part's correct. Now we have to find what a and b values are. So I'm going to put the original one on the left. The simplest way to solve this is to go through the following sequence of operations. Let's get rid of the denominator everywhere. And the way that we do that is we multiply all three pieces by x plus 5 and all three pieces by x minus 4 and cancel, whatever we can cancel. 
In the first piece, the top and bottom completely cancels. Or the, bo the, the bottom completely cancels with my final multiplication. In the second piece, set and multiply that, that second piece, that first piece on the right, by x plus 5 on top, which cancels the x plus 5 on the bottom, and multiply on top by x minus 4, which doesn't cancel with anything, it survives. And for the second term, multiply both, both multiply that on top by x plus 5 and x minus 4. The x minus 4 will cancel at the bottom x minus 4, but the x plus 5 will not cancel, it will survive. Now this expression is true for all values of x. And you can be strategic in which ones you, you pick. I'm going to choose x equals something that makes one piece vanish. I'm going to choose x is equal to 4 because that will make the first piece vanish and be able and allow me to isolate for the for the b variable, or for, for the b uh, unknown. So replace x with 4, 5 times 4, 20, minus 2, I get 18, equals a multiplied by 0 plus b multiplied by 9. So 18 is equal to 9 times b. That means b is equal to 2, 18 over 9. So we have 2 over x minus 4, which would be choice b. We don't need to do the rest of them, but let's get a anyway. To get a, we choose minus 5 for x, because that will make the second piece vanish. So minus 5 times 5, negative 25, minus 2, negative 27, equals a times minus 5 minus 4, that's minus 9, plus b times 0. Now we divide both sides by negative 9. Negative 27 divided by negative 9 is 3. So 3 is equal to 8. So it matched up. So we would write our, our decomposition as 3 over x plus 5 plus 2 over x minus 4. And then if we were asked to integrate this, that's really, really straightforward to integrate. That'd be 3 times ln absolute value of x plus 5 plus 2 times ln absolute value of x minus 4 plus c. And the reason it's simple is because the coefficient in front of the uh, in front of the x is one. There's no number in front. You don't have to do a substitution. You use a shortcut. In number 23, there's no such shortcut available. It's asking us to integrate a function that's kind of like the one that we just worked with to get the partial fraction decomposition. It's a hint of sorts. So let's go through that, see how it works, see what happens. I want to first do the decomposition. So x minus 49 over 2x plus 10 over x minus 1. I want to write that as some unknown a over 2x plus 10 plus some unknown b over x minus 1. And then do the same thing we did last time. Multiply both sides by the every piece on both sides by the 2x plus 10 and the x minus 1 and cancel whatever we can. And when we do that, we get x minus 49 equals a times x minus 1 plus b times 2x plus 10. Now, I'm going to choose an x value. I'm going to let x equal 1. So we have 1 minus 49, that's negative 48, equals a times 0 plus b times 12. Then we divide both sides by 12. Negative 48 over 12 is negative 4. So negative 4 is equal to b. Now we let x equal something else. We want to make the first term stay and the second term vanish. So you set 2x plus 10 equal to 0. So 2x is equal to negative 10. That means x is equal to minus 5. So I'm going to let x equal minus 5 to make that piece 0. So I'll have minus 5 minus 49 equals a times negative 5 minus 1. That's negative 6. plus b times 0 
54 would be 0. We have negative 54 equals negative 6a. And that's going to be divide both sides by negative 6, so it's going to be 9. So that means, put it all together, we can integrate, instead of integrating x minus 49 over 2x plus 10 times x minus 1, we can integrate a over 2x plus 10, so a is 9 over 2x plus 10, plus b, we found b was negative 4, over x minus 1, integrated with respect to x. Okay, the second one's easy to do. We have 4 ln absolute value of x minus 1 plus c. The first one requires a little bit more effort. So you could let w equal to x plus 10 then dw by dx is 2, dw is equal to 2 times dx, that means dx is dw over 2, so I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this one a long way, so this turns into the 9 in front, 9 times the integral of 1 over w, times dx, which gets replaced by dw over 2. So that's 9 over 2, integral 1 over w, that's ln absolute value of w. And we don't need a, a plus, another plus c, we already have one, you can combine both of them together to make a big plus c. Or ln absolute value of x minus 1 plus c. And now replace w with what it is w is 2x plus 10. Oh, oh, I, I missed something, made a mistake. There's a negative 4, right? Plus negative 4, so that should be minus, minus, minus. Sorry about that. Minus, minus, minus. I think I could hear some of you yelling at me that I lost the minus sign through this, through to uh, some kind of space-time paradox. Anyway, that's the answer. 9 over 2 ln of 2x plus 10 minus 4 ln x minus 1, and we have that in option D. And that thing with the 2, that forgetting that 2 down in the basement, that was the most common mistake on the quiz. Um, quiz number 3. If you haven't gone through quiz 3 again, I, rec I strongly recommend doing so. Look at the quiz 3 that you wrote. You sh should be able to recover the problems now. They should be open. You should be able to open it up and see what, what, what the correct answers are. Please go through that again before your exam. You will find it helpful to know how to do those problems. Okay, 24. Integral from 0 to infinity of e to the root of x over the root of x. So there's infinities. We're going to get our antiderivative, whatever we get from there, and we're going to evaluate that from 0 to infinity. Yes, you're supposed to write limits, limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 0 to b. So I'll write it. I'll write it because it's good for you. Oh, there we go. I'm not writing it. It's good for you, like broccoli. You write down limit, limit as b approaches infinity of integral from 0 to b of e to the root of x over the root of x dx. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do it like that. So there you go. Then take the antiderivative and evaluate on the bounds. So that'll be a side calculation to do the antiderivative. Integral of e to the square root of x all divided by the square root of x. You cannot cancel the square root of x. It's not allowed to do that. One's trapped in an exponential and they don't cancel like that. So you're looking at this as usual, 
choosing between integration by parts and substitution. And this type is a, is a particular well-known type. You're going to want to use substitution for it. So I'm going to let w equal the square root of x. Then dw by dx, the derivative of the square root of x, well, x squared of x is x to the power of 1 half. We take the derivative of that, we get 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And we write that as 1 over 2 times the root of x. Bring the negative power means bring the power down, downstairs as a positive power. Power one half means square root. Now, cross multiply. So dw is equal to dx over two root x. And now cross multiply the two root x. So we have two root x dw equals dx. Now, if you're doing this the way that Dr. Meredith does it, then you have an easier task for this particular type of problem. So that his way works much better for this because you can immediately replace the dx over root x with 2 times dw. Anyway, so we have e to the w. I'm just going to replace that one. I'm going to leave the other root x in the basement, leave it alone. And then the dx I'm going to replace by 2 root x dw. The root x is cancelled off the bottom. And we can put the 2 out front. 2 times the integral of e to the w dw. Which is 2 integral of e to the w is e to the w plus c, but we have bounds of integration, so we don't need a plus c. We get 2 e to the root of x since w is root x. So that's our answer. That can get substituted in. 2 e to the root of x. Now we plug in the top bound. So 2e to the square root of infinity minus the bottom bound 2e to the square root of 0. Square root of infinity. Well, let's see, is it a million? Is a million times a million infinity? No, it's not big enough. A trillion? Is a trillion times a trillion infinity? No, it's still not big enough. The only thing that, the, that you square to get infinity is infinity. So square root of infinity is still infinity. It's Pretty powerful idea. Square root of zero is zero. Now e to the infinity, that's taking e, which is 2.7, multiplying it by itself an infinite number of times. 2.7 times 2.7 times 2.7. So let's say you do this for 100 years. You're going to get some big number, but you're not done yet because you haven't done it an infinite number of times. You keep multiplying forever. You're not going to get anything other than infinity. Multiply by 2, still infinity. Well, e to the 0 is 1, so we have infinity minus 2. Not very, not a very exciting battle, infinity. That, whenever you get infinity from these, that means the result can be summarized as the, the integral divergence. You don't get an answer. This was an area under the curve of e to the root of x over the root of x from 0 to infinity. That would mean the area is infinite. Okay, number 25. Number 25 is a scary one. It is a challenge type of problem. It's non-standard. So Math 25 has, it, has its own non-standard problems. And this is our kind of version of the non-standard problem, one of the types that we have. There's several, several other non-standard types. There's a trick for solving this. Once we take the antiderivative, whatever that antiderivative is, we're going to evaluate it from minus infinity to zero. Yeah, we should do the limit thing. Limit as a approaches minus infinity of uh, integral from a to zero of that function. But I'm not going to write it. You can write it if you really, really want to. I don't feel like it right now. So I'll just not do it. Okay. 
So we're, we're gonna, I'm going to do a side calculation next for the integral of 2 over 2 plus e to the negative x dx. This is not 2 times ln absolute value of 2 plus e to the negative x. You can't do that. And I write that again. It, it's so prevalent that people try to do these things. Integral of 1 over f of x dx is not ln absolute value of f of x plus c. You cannot do it. Now if you try substitution, try to let w equal 2 plus e to the negative x, it won't work. At least not the way you want it to. It will work, but it's ugly. It's ugly. You have to do things that you don't want to do. The quickest way to integrate this is to multiply by 1. Multiply everything by e to the x on top and e to the x on the bottom. We multiply by 1. You don't change the value of the integral, but you can reveal what that value is. This is a trick. Multiplication by 1 is a very general solution strategy for mathematics. You just have to find the right form of 1 to use. Okay, now simplify. 2 e to the x, and now we have to multiply the e to the x through the bracket in the basement. So 2 e to the x plus e to the negative x times e to the x. And simplify. 2 e to the x over 2 e to the x plus e to the x times e to the negative x is the exponents add negative x plus x. You would, if you can do this more quickly, please do so. Showing all the steps. 2e to the x over 2e to the x plus e to the 0. Negative x plus x is 0. And then e to the 0 is 1. Uh-oh. Okay. Now we'll do a substitution. It'll work out beautifully at this point. Let w equal 2e to the x plus 1. Then dw by dx is 2e to the x. dw is 2e to the x over dx. And then dx is then dw over 2e to the x. So that will replace this dx. Okay, so we didn't touch the top, we didn't do anything with it, and we did replace the bottom with w, and then dx gets replaced by dw over 2 e to the x. Now if we're using Dr. Meredith's method, this dw, where is this? Um, dw is 2 e to the x dx, well look what we have up top, you have 2 e to the x multiplied by dx, you can immediately replace that with dw. So works out fairly well. So the 2 cancels and the e to the x cancels the uh, integral of 1 over w dw, which is ln absolute value of w plus c, but we don't need the plus c because we're going to plug this in with bound integration. So we get ln of 2 e to the x plus 1, since that's what w is. All right. I'm going to go back up to the top and sub that in here. So ln of uh, absolute value 2 e to the x plus 1 evaluated from negative infinity to zero. Now plug in negative infinity. We have ln absolute value 2 e to the minus infinity plus 1 minus the ln of absolute value 2 e to the zero plus 1. So e to the minus infinity is 0, 2 times 0 plus 1, minus the ln of e to the 0 is 1, so minus ln of 2 plus 1. Oh, I screwed that up. Sorry about that. Do the top bound first. I'll erase all this. My apologies. 
sorry, sorry, sorry. Top down minus bottom down. So ln of 2 e to the 0 plus 1 minus ln of e to the minus infinity plus 1. I'll show some more steps there. e to the 0 is 1, so ln of 2 plus 1 minus ln of 2 multiplied by 1 over e to the positive infinity plus 1. So e to the minus infinity is 1 over e to the positive infinity using exponent laws. We get ln absolute value of 3 minus ln absolute value of 2 times 0, which is 0. So, e to infinity is infinity, 1 over infinity is a really, really bad lottery. 1 in a million is low odds, 1 in infinity odds is even lower, it's 0. So we have 1 absolute value of 3 minus 1 of 1. We can drop the absolute value since 2 is positive and 1 is positive. 1 of 3 is just 1 of 3, 1 of 1 is 0, so we get 1. And I have to take a quick pause. 1, 3.